If you're a hockey fan, you probably have jerseys. And if you're a jersey fan, you probably have a lot of jerseys. For some of us, it's a lifestyle. It's $250 because the reverse retro is on sale. Everyone has a story with their jersey. We want to hear all of them. Every day is a jersey day, but today is Jersey Thursday. This is Jersey Thursday, as you can see from my amazing, well-crafted sign behind me. I'm here with Sam Chang from The Broadcast. How's it going? It's going. How are you? Good. This is, um, I'm definitely excited as a, a fan of The Broadcast, a fan of what you guys are doing and all of the stuff that you guys have done. Thanks for having me. Yeah. You brought a number of jerseys with you today. I have all of my jerseys. I don't think we should go through all of them because it will take a very long time. Fair enough. Like yeah. a selection. One of their episodes, um, the first one went well over originally like almost two hours because, and it was just based on two jerseys. So Wow. Yeah, I don't think I'll be going that. over. No, okay. no, I don't think I'll get close to that. Okay, okay. I can see two in the back. Um, I see one's burgundy. Yeah. And I'm. do you want me to guess what those are? Sure. Okay. I'm going to guess that is the, not the winter classic, the heritage classic from 2014. That is actually, let me move the chair. It's actually just like a regular abs jersey whoa it doesn't even have like a name on it it's just like a plain so i got the t- i got the team wrong yeah i should be ashamed of myself i actually so you messaged me and said like we can go through all of, like the connects eras i actually don't have i mean no i'm sorry i have a lot of connects jerseys but like my actual collection is probably fewer connects jerseys and more um just general jerseys. Yeah. yeah, I'm in the same boat. I have, um, I think most of them are in that that lovely picture behind me. Um, <laughs> amazing decorations, I know. Um, but I I have like three, no, like five Avalanche jerseys, and then I have the rest are just like different teams like this. Yeah. Um, I also forgot to mention, because I always like starting the episode off saying which jersey we're wearing. And I, I know you said... Um, we'll make exceptions, especially the way things are going out in BC. But I chose this because I don't own any Canucks jerseys, and this is the closest Fair thing enough. that I, yeah, this is the closest thing that I have to like something on the West. And like, there's no I'm missing a patch. I need to get a patch one these days, and like, I might get Joe Sackick on this. Yeah, but, that's a good choice. Oh, how about if you were to wear a jersey today, barring uh, heat conditions? What would you wear? Um, oh, that's hard. I actually, I would probably wear, I have a um, University of Michigan Quinn Hughes jersey, which is probably out of the ones I do. I have a lot of signed jerseys, but out of sure. the ones that aren't signed, that's probably the one I like wearing the most because it's, it's the least likely that anyone else in Vancouver has one. I know there are like, I think I've run into maybe three or four people who have one, but for the most part, when I'm at games, like people are always like, whoa, that's a super cool jersey. Wait, who's on the back again? Uh, Quinn Hughes. So it's Michigan. Sure. Maze and blue. Oh, 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 Quinn Hughes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably, that's probably what I would have worn if I was wearing a jersey. That is nice. Yeah. That is just like such a, I, like, I, I love college jerseys, just how like they have their own kind of vibe to yeah. them. But that's, uh, I, I like that specific to, well, Quinn Hughes. You have the reverse retro on the back there too. I've got, yes, I actually, I have a lot of abs jerseys. So. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. So I've got the reverse retro, again, no name yeah. on it. Just a regular, it's oh, just, man. it's, it's the best reverse retro jersey. It's the only Easy. one worth getting. Yeah. Easy. Maybe the Kings one, but yeah, wasn't a huge fan of the rest of them. Yeah, but like I just, 
I, I mean, what else can you say about that jersey? That's just yeah. 11 out of 10. Um, yeah, I, I would love to get that jersey. Unfortunately, like I ran out of my jersey budget right when that jersey came out. And I was like, oh no, I need that jersey. And then it was impossible to get them after. Yeah. Yeah. Man, who'd you get on the back if you were to get someone? Yeah, I probably would have gotten McKinnon. I mean, that you can't go wrong with McKinnon. Like, he's just yeah. the year he had. Um, who would you get? Who would I get? I would probably get either Rantanen, Pierre, um, as he says, Rantanen, or whatever the fuck he says, um, or him or Kel McCarr. Good choices. Yeah. And I see, um, is that a buff slug behind you? It is not. Oh, a- I'm zero for two. It's Oh, okay. It's a 92 Stanley Cup. Oh, that is amazing. Amazing. Yeah. It has the finals uh, patch on it. Yeah. Wait, it's um, 91 or 92? 92. Okay. 92. Okay. So that's, I don't actually have a story for this one. I just, I have, the story is that I started collecting jerseys when I was younger and my dad kind of got into it with me as, I guess, as kind of a bonding thing. So he has funded a significant part of my jersey collection. So it's largely just like whatever cool jerseys we can find. So there's no, there's yeah. no real story to it. It's just... It's kind yeah. of like a, this sounds really obnoxious, but it's like oh, a whole thing collection. Honestly, like I've seen so many collections and people being, I mean, I've, I've met also a lot of Jersey snobs and everyone can do whatever the hell they want as long as they're getting their jerseys the legit way and they're not doing stupid stuff with it. Like putting like, like player 69 on the back or something like that. No, no, I don't. No. I don't do that. Yeah, what was the first uh, what was the first jersey you got? The first jersey I got was actually I think I have it here. Um, it's actually a Max Brandon Morrison jersey. Ooh. West the Coast old, Express. Yeah, West Coast Express. I don't even know which way my camera is. Um, uh, I can see it. And I used to like go line up outside of their practice facility to get it signed. So it's actually, you can't really see it because it's so old. No, I can see it. But it's signed by Bertuzzi, Morrison, and Nasland. That is awesome. Um, and then the back is signed by Ed Jovanovsky and Dan Cloutier. So you pretty much have their, almost their entire top six from yeah. like that era. I, the only person I wish I had on here was Matthias Oland. Yeah. That's who it's missing. Yeah. But this was my first jersey, and it's like, it's super gross. It's like dirty, but I can't wash it because of the signatures. Shoot. But yeah. that is, and you can't really frame it because then you're missing the two signatures on the other side. Yeah. I also like can't frame these because I literally have nowhere to put them. Yeah. And also, jerseys are to be worn. Like, yeah. Wearing them is better than just like framing them and just. Yeah having them on your wall I, in your office? So I don't wear the ones that are signed, like that I bought signed, um, just because they're so expensive. Um, yeah. So <laughs> my friend tells me that this is why the Canucks are cursed. I keep them <laughs> in a bag in my closet because I actually don't have room to put them anywhere. So like my friends are convinced that I've like brought a curse on myself from the hockey gods because I don't put them up. And like, how how long have you been doing the thing where you keep them in the the bag? Probably like eight years. Okay. Yeah. It's not good. Okay. So wait, the, the 2011 Canucks aren't on you then? No. Okay. I'm going to go with a no. I think at the time I still had them like, Hanging in my closet, at least, not in a bag. So it it took a while for it to finally like manifest. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like if you're going by like eight years, it got you guys like Patterson, Quinn Hughes. So, yeah, I mean that's you know that's true. But it did get us seven years of Jim Benning. So yeah, 
that's like might be on me. You might have to like do half in the closet, half in bags. I know. I don't know. Got to figure something out. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, like I, I'm starting to run out of room in my closet. I, I don't know what I'm like. Jerseys take up half of my closet and the other half's like that kind yeah. of clothes. I mean, they're so bulky. Like, Oh yeah. And then they like, I don't really know yeah. what else to do. Um, you'll probably like the next two I have. Oh, actually there's three, but one is in a bag. Um, Oh God. See, okay. Chair. Amazing. Um, these are like my babies. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, a Sakic jersey signed. Okay. Okay. Um, that is awesome. Which I love. And then probably this is this was the hardest one in my entire collection to find. It took me like four years. Yeah. Um, it's a signed Peter Forsberg jersey. Because nice. they're like impossible to find. I don't know why, um, but it took forever. Um, and then I have a I have a signed Patrick Watcher that stays in the Oh, wow. Uh, can you flip it over? Oh. It's the old uh, CCM, yeah. Wow. Yeah. That is awesome. So those three together are like my most prized possessions. Yeah, it's the holy trinity. Yeah. Well, pretty much, yeah. It's, I mean, it's hard to beat, right? Like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that's awesome. I, I love like with Forsberg, he only wore that style for like Really, if you want to be like super accurate, he only wore it for the one year because the year he made the comeback, he only played the two away games. Yeah. I The jersey that got away from me was when I was looking for the signed Forsberg Abs jersey, I came across a signed Forsberg Nordiques jersey. Wow. And for whatever reason at the time I was like, no, I, I need, I, it has to be an abs jersey so I can complete the trilogy. Yeah. And so I didn't buy it and I have literally regretted it every day since. I mean, it's just such an awesome jersey to have yeah. in your, because it's like, that's the year, like rookie of the year and also like Nordiques, like you don't, yeah. so like, that's a tough one. I like, I don't know what I do in that situation. Yeah. Yeah. It was brutal. I like, one of the worst decisions I've ever made, I think. I mean, you came out okay. Like, I mean, I don't yeah. know, like, yeah. Yeah, I came out okay, but I think about that jersey a lot. It's like the jersey that got away from you. Yeah. Like, it just haunts you in your dreams. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it would be super cool to have a Forsberg Nordiques jersey. Like, I, I have a Stasny Nordiques jersey, but I should have gotten the Forsberg. Yeah, like, I mean, everyone gets Stasny or... Yeah. Whoever or the Fleur. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just, it's impossible to find another one. Like it's, they're so rare. I should have just gotten it when I had the chance. Autograph too. Yeah. And I don't know. I mean, they might, there might be some out there. Maybe Forsberg will show up at some point yeah. with a pen and just be like, yeah. It's, and it's crazy like how hard it is to find his jerseys and it is like impossible to find Korea jerseys. That's super weird because, like, I mean, Forsberg, at least he had, like, all the Stanley Cups. Yeah. Or the two Stanley Cups. And there should – I mean, like, you, you would think because Korea was a popular player yeah. in his prime. Yeah. I think he just hasn't – I think a lot of players sign jerseys after they retire. And so there is, like, a constant supply. Mm. But Korea basically went off the grid when he retired. And so yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't sign anything. So all you have is whatever he signed during his career. Yeah. And nothing else really. Yeah. Like I've been trying to look for a Ducks Korea Jersey forever. And they're always just like crazy expensive. Um, I also, I like to keep this one right next to the abs jerseys because I think it's funny. And because one of my best friends is a Red Wings fan and it drives him insane that I do this. Um, but I have the 2002 Iserman jersey. Ah, ha, ha. 
and I like to keep it together with the other Avs yeah. jerseys just to piss him off. I mean, it, it's still like if you want to like merge the errors and stuff like that, like it's still like they fit kind of fit together. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And then if you want to talk about obscure jerseys, probably the worst decision, the worst jersey I ever got was, do you remember when the Canucks drafted Hunter Shankarik? Yep. Uh, he had a really good training camp and I really liked him. So I, at the end of training camp, I got a custom Shankarik jersey made at the Canucks store. Oh no. And obviously he's a bust. No. So, I think this is like one of four Hunter and characters these that exist in the world. Man. Yeah. Everyone was just so hot on him. Like. I know he had a great training camp and I was like, I, I mean, when I bought it, I was like, this is either going to be a great bet or a great story. It's like one or the other. Yeah. Yeah. Man. I don't know what it is with like, the, especially like in that era, like the Canucks with like prospects that didn't pan out, like, Cody Hodgson. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Like, uh, who else was uh, drafted then? Uh, Patrick White. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nate Smith. Yeah. I, that, that's quite a while. I think that's actually quite a while before, but they had, yeah. a, they had a string of, like, really, really bad first-round busts. But, I mean, a lot of them were – I mean, but Hodgson was, like, 10th, right? Or like eighth, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but I guess because they were remember. like because they were like finishing in like the bottom of the first round because like they were like one of the top teams in the league then. So yeah. like it was kind of like borderline second round players yeah. being picked, and it wasn't like a guy like Elias Pettersson who's just like a surefire. I mean, again, you never know because. Nolan Patrick went number two and like uh, Nico Hischer went number. So like, you never know the player like that high, but even still, like there was like the number of years where they were like just picking like 25th and they were like getting like guys like that, like Nate Smith. Yeah. Yeah. But honestly, like I love when people get jerseys that are just like, they got a player that's just super kind of obscure or random and get i mean like it's it's still a good story like getting someone who just didn't pan out but had a lot of hype yeah you know who do you know who rob fay is yeah so rob has probably the best and most interesting jersey collection i've ever seen he's got like 500 jerseys um and they're all just like a lot of them are super obscure he's and like He's got really good stories. Man. Yeah. He's like, I think you can have two approaches to collecting jerseys. Like mine is more just like, I just, I like Hall of Fame players and that's what I've been kind of trying to get. Rob does the thing where he goes to like, wherever he goes, he finds some kind of like thrift store, jersey store, whatever. And he just like, he just finds stories. He finds jerseys with cool stories. Mm. Um, so it's super interesting. I have a feeling that me and Rob would get along very well. Yeah. Yeah. Cause like I, I hit up as much, um, thrift stores and just like secondhand stuff as like, that's where I got this yeah. and a ton of like my, cause I got a lot, I have a lot of vintage stuff and that's where like, I'll get it. But I love, I let no, I really love that approach. Yeah. Yeah. It's way more interesting. Oh no. I mean like this stuff like is, I mean up there as well. Oh yeah, no, it's yeah, it, it is. It's just like his stories are way better because like they're way more obscure and like they're funnier. Whereas yeah. this is just like it's cool. sad. <laughs> it's like the Canucks uh, drafted this guy and it didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, that's one of my few busts. Uh, yeah, sorry, Hunter, if you're watching this, I remember a while back you tweeted and. It was in the context of a couple of weeks ago when uh, that that guy was uh, flaunting about his Kings fandom. Yeah. And I remember you, po- well, like th- that's a whole other story that 
we can delve into if you want. We don't have to. But I remember you posted a picture. I think it was yourself as a kid with like Brian Burke and uh, a couple of the Canucks players from around that time. How much would you like go to like fan things like that? Like um, meet the Canucks used to do, it was, I think it was called the Canucks Fan Carnival. And they used to do that once a year. So that I went to that for a couple of years and that's where I got those photos. Mm -hmm. Um, Then they started doing super skills every year. And I did that kind of probably for like four or five years. But other than that, um, I haven't done, I don't go to a ton of them. Like I'll go if it's a season ticket um, holder event. Sure. Um, But do you have season tickets? I have half season tickets. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go Which on. is still a lot. Oh, that's still yeah. something. Like it's yeah. a lot of games to go to. Not like not to complain, but you can be the there was the year that the world juniors were here, I got I got those with my dad. And I think between the middle of December and the end of January, I think we were at Rogers like I wanna say like close to twenty eight days. <laughs> Man. Which is, it's a lot of hockey. Like, I I don't know if I would do that again. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, like, I, I wouldn't complain. No. No, no it was I, I wouldn't complain fun, at all, yeah. Like, it's hard to do anything else with the rest of your life. Jeez. that That's, like, peaking, pretty much. Like, just 28 yeah. days. Yeah. Just nonstop. And, like, were well, these good the World seats? Juniors is, like, two games a day, yeah. every day, for two weeks. So... I was Jeez. basically just living there. <laughs> Shoot. It's crazy. When it came to Toronto, we like, cause uh, we went down there and really all the games were pricey except the teams. No one else really wanted to see. Everyone just got so behind Denmark. And like, I just, I love, and I think they won in like shootout. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. But I just, I, I love when people just like pick favorites. In, uh, I mean, you, you yeah. kind of have to, right? Like it's hard to, I don't know how people watch a game without like even subconsciously like a little bit picking one team. Like yeah. I can't, I can't do it. If I'm watching any game, like I, even if it's two teams, I have absolutely no interest in, I will just like subconsciously have a team I'm cheering a little more for. It, it just makes it way more fun to watch something. Right. Especially a tournament. Yeah. Yeah. How many uh, like interesting games have you gone to with like those uh, half season tickets? Um, so I was at the game where Marty McSorley slashed Donald Brashear across the head. Oh, wow. Um, I remember like two rows over for me, some Canucks fan jumped down two rows and like tackled a Bruins fan. And like there were f- fights like breaking out of the stands. So I was at that game. I was at... Um, what else was I at? I was at game five of the 2011 semi-conference, no, conference finals, conference finals when the Canucks eliminated the Sharks in overtime to go to the Stanley Cup finals. So I was at that game. Shit. I was at game one of the Stanley Cup finals that year. I like to pretend like nothing else happened after that. <laughs> That was the last um, game of the Stanley Cup final. The Bruins forfeited and yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah. They only played one game, the Canucks won, and it was over. Yeah. The end. Good times. Nothing else happened. Um, what else have I been at? I was at Trevor Linden's retirement ceremony. Um, I was supposed to be at Daniel and Henrik Sedin's last home game, and my best friend was getting married, and she set her rehearsal dinner for that night. So oh. I. Oh. And I'm still super bitter about it. Like super bitter about it. Yeah. Um, the 2006 World Juniors, I had a season, I had like a package of tickets and the gold medal game was the first week of January and I was going to school in Montreal at the time and my mom wouldn't let me skip like the first week of school to watch that game. So Mm. I missed the gold medal game. I watched every game except the gold medal game, which Canada won. Um, yeah. So still super bitter about that one. <laughs> um, 
Nothing really historical recently because the Canucks have been so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Man. But that's... Yeah, that, that sucks about those two games. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Like, missing two that. Of the worst games to miss. Especially, like, how the Canucks were that season when Henrik Sedin and Daniel Sedin retired. And that was, like, the only good... I don't want to say, like, when it, well, it wasn't good. It was bittersweet because you don't want to lose the Sedins. Yeah. But it was the only, like, important kind of moment that season. Yeah. Or like, and it was a good yeah, game. Like they both got on the scoreboard. Yeah. So yeah, those were those were pretty brutal. I think more recently, probably the only thing that stands out is last season the Canucks had a game with the Avs where they went back and forth, and I think the Canucks ended up winning seven six in overtime. Yeah. So I, I was at I think, that game. I think I remember that. I was at that game, and I only remember it because the Canucks were down in the third with like three minutes left and people left. And I like, it's my pet peeve when people leave games early, especially yeah. when the score is close. I'm it's like, like, stay, watch, or not yeah. even, not even when the score is close or not, just like you paid for the hockey game, stay yeah. the whole yeah. way at least. And like Canucks tickets are super expensive. So I'm like, yeah, you're really going to leave with like five minutes left because you want to like save yourself 10 minutes in traffic. Like it doesn't even make that big of a difference. And it, it drives me nuts. And so it was hilarious that these people left and they tied it, I think, in like the last couple of minutes. And you could just see people like rushing to get back in for overtime. Um, so that one was pretty funny. Yeah. I like vaguely remember that game. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like, I, I think I remember, I think I saw the score for that and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, how did you lose to the Canucks? Oh, so much pain. <laughs> yeah. You have, you're very active on Twitter. Um, and occasionally because it's Twitter and because a lot of people are idiots, you have a lot of idiots replying to you with just really dumb stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It happens a lot. Yeah. Um, and I don't know why. Yeah. I don't, I like, I genuinely don't know why it happens, but. Yeah, it does happen a lot. <laughs> but like, I'll give you like a billion percent of the credit that you call these people out, but you don't, you do it so dignified that it hits worse than just going like, oh, <laughs> like you suck, you suck. I, I'm glad you think so, because I think there are probably a lot, there's probably, little, there's definitely people who I think my <laughs> fairly aggressive approach to Twitter irritates. Um, and it definitely rubs people the wrong way. And I've had people be like, be super critical about it. Um, but I tend to think of it more as if you're, if like, if you're going to say something rude to me, I don't actually feel bad about calling you out. Or like, if you're going to say something really dumb, like, I just, I don't know. I try to do it in a way that I think is funny, yeah. but I think sometimes people misread my tone yeah but if they're antagonizing you you have the right to like fight yeah. back yeah and people yeah. are always like you should just ignore them like and like i have started to think about when i respond because i've had people be like you you have enough of a platform now that when you do it it, it causes other people to respond to the to the person you're quote tweeting and I, I do think about that and I try not to do it when I think the person is being genuine or like trying to have an actual discussion. But yeah, there are times when like, I, I try to limit it, limit it to when I think people are doing something in bad faith or like going out of their way to troll me. And I just, it's just how I respond. People are like, you should ignore it. And I'm like, but why, why should I ignore it? I feel no. like if you're going to say something rude, I'm just going to call you out. And it gives, it puts them on the spotlight. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. And then everyone sees it. And, and then it's almost like pulling their pants down in front of the entire website. Yeah. And I get why, like, I get why some people don't like that or that it, they find like, they think I shouldn't do it. Um, yeah. But it's not for everyone. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm on board with it. I yeah. but. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I honestly, like, like, it's entertaining as hell. 
the while back with uh, what's his name, uh, certain LA Kings fan that, that used um, because I I know hockey as his reason for what was it, like Rob Rob Blake being overrated. Yeah, Rob Blake was overrated in the year that he won the Norris Trophy with the LA Kings. Yeah. I think was his argument. Something like that. Yeah. But like his two go-tos were like... Plus minus. He was like, you've never watched Rob Blake play a single game. And I was like, I don't know you, so I don't know why you would know what I have or haven't watched. And then was also like what year did you start watching hockey or like, did you watch hockey in 1998? And I was like, I don't have to answer this question. I could, but I don't want to because it's rude. But it's such a redundant, regardless of whether you started watching hockey or not, like it doesn't take an idiot to go up and look at stats or like watch YouTube videos. So it's such a redundant argument. Like you weren't watching hockey then when anyone can look up and what and like even like people upload full games of yeah teams yeah it's like the worst it's the worst and least intellectually sound way of gatekeeping like all gatekeeping is bad but gatekeeping on the basis that like oh you didn't watch a game because you're a new fan it's like like people can i wasn't born in the 70s i've watched the entire 72 series because it's on dvds like yeah. It's really not that hard. So making an assumption about when people started watching the game or saying whether or not they can have an opinion based on when they started to watch is it's ridiculous. Like it makes no sense and it drives me insane. My dad will tell me stories about the Leafs in like the sixties and such and such. And I have opinions based on that and from watching like games like from like the sixty four playoff sixty seven and all that. And I never saw those guys play when they were actually playing but it it, yeah it doesn't really mean shit yeah exactly and for all i know yeah it does it doesn't matter like yeah my entire point (laughs) my entire point that i think he was trying to respond to and it became like the sideshow about whether or not rob blake was good was my point was if rob blake had never demanded a trade from the la kings and he had stayed there till he retired no la king fans would be like oh he was garbage they'd be like Rob Blake was great, but they hate him because he left. Yeah. And then, then he won a cup yeah. with us. And then everything yeah. was great. Exactly. No, but, oh, geez. Plus, minus. Like, I, I just, I started a lot. In yeah. fact, that, that makes his argument even better. Like, that, that no, not, not his argument. Um, the argument that Rob Blake was not overrated because he still put up that number of points and like won a Norris trophy, even with that. Yeah. Plus minus. Yeah. It was not a good argument. No. Do you think there, cause I remember like it was like a day or two after um, that guy and the other guy were still arguing with some people about it. Do you think they're still arguing? I honestly don't know. I had to meet them. Oh, but possibly. Like, I don't know what, like, I woke up the next day and they were still going and I was like, yeah, you're both going on mute. You guys can do it. You want to do, but yeah, Yeah. you don't want to be a part of it. I I love when you call people out on uh, the broadcast, like, like you started out with like the reviews. Yeah. But I I remember there was like one that like was some like angry lady that was saying like, I, I, I forget. Or have they all just been like that? We've, I, I mean, we mostly get really good reviews. We've had a handful of pretty funny ones where people give us like one star and are like ragey. Um, so those are always funny, but we don't, it doesn't happen that often. I think there's been maybe like three or four. Yeah. But I mean, for the most part, I mean, you guys are great going into more serious thing. I love the attention uh, that you on Twitter and even on the podcast are giving to the, the whole Chicago Blackhawks uh, um, I was going to say scandal, but yeah, I mean, we've talked about it in detail on our la- on our last two podcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think the essential critique is that, given the allegations against them for covering up an alleged sexual assault by their video coach, um, who went on to 
assault a minor at Mm -hmm. a high school um, where they had given him a reference letter. I I think the, the league's approach to what you would have expected, but also just shitty. Yeah. And that's... And inadequate. It it is like inadequate. And I remember when I was telling someone about um, Nick Letty, uh, when, uh, the person from the Islanders interviewed him. And when I was preparing them for what he said, I said, he gave the most hockey answer. Yeah. And the fact that I could say that he gave the most hockey answer and everyone knows what that means is pretty sad. Yeah. And like, there were people who were really mad that people were calling him out. Um, but I think when, when you've had two former teammates publicly say that everyone knew and that, um, you know, you had Brent Sopel saying publicly that the front office should be in jail. Um, when you've had two former coaches go and publicly acknowledge the situation, I I don't think it's acceptable that your first answer is, well, they're a first class organization and they're going to do what they're going to do. Like that's, that doesn't say anything. It doesn't offer any support to, your former teammates who are the survivors of the situation. And it's, you know, it was just, it was a cop-out answer that mm-hmm. you would, that you would give if somebody asked if like a trade went wrong or like if, if that was a question about Dale Talon forgetting to qualify his RFA is yeah. like, you would give that answer. But in a situation where, that coach ended up being a registered sex offender. Like this isn't people are like, Oh, we have to wait to get the facts. You don't need to wait to get the no. facts. He's a registered sex offender, period. Like, and you have three people going on record and saying that everyone knew. Yeah. So if the scope of your answer is they're a first class organization and you're not saying like, you know, in my experience, they're a first class organization, but obviously there are serious issues like he didn't even acknowledge that he literally no. didn't acknowledge the other side of it at all. And I thought that was, I, I thought that deserved to be called out and people who think that saying an answer is inadequate is equivalent to attacking someone I think are doing like, I think when you make that characterization, you're doing it in bad faith. Yeah. And I and, just yeah. don't respect your opinion. The answer he gave is it just oozes that he wants a front office job with the NHL in the future. Like it's yeah, the most, either that yeah, or, or he's an idiot. Which, I don't even know if it means that. I think it's just, he can't be bothered to say anything that might potentially get him in trouble with the league. Yeah. It's the most, dip, it doesn't, but it doesn't need to be diplomatic. You can say something neutral, at least say it's unfortunate to hear what happened. He didn't say that. Like, yeah. I'm sorry to hear that happened. Um, like that's all you need to say. Like acknowledge yeah. he just, that. He yeah. defaulted to like their standard PR answer. Yeah. And, and like, I don't want to echo too much of, uh, like your last episode, because if you want to hear that, you can hear your episode, uh, broadcast episode. But, um, one thing I will agree with is that I think the NHL is trying to bury this or at least try to bury this until the playoffs are done. And by the time this episode comes out, they might be done the way things are going. Yeah. But I think the NHL, I mean, uh, someone was pointing out parts of Rick Westhead's Joe Murphy book and just how the NHL was almost joking about concussions. I wouldn't put it past them that they're doing their best to bury this as much as they can until the, the playoffs are done and even pressuring a lot of the media to do so. Yeah, I mean, I think if people aren't covering the story, then... I think a lot of fans have done a really good job of holding the beat reporters and national reporters that they follow accountable and kind of pressuring them to focus on the story. And I think that's, I think that's a good thing. Do you have one more that you want to show? Um, yes. Um, we talked about meat and greets earlier. So yeah. the only actual, the only other Jersey I've gotten Signed at a meet and greet is three. Yeah. So it's the Canucks 50th anniversary jersey. First one without nice. the Vancouver word mark, which is good. Yeah. Um, oh, no, this is not the signed one. This is an unsigned one. I have a signed Pedersen okay. jersey. 
But it's like the um, same one with the, the patch. It's everything. the same one, but it's, yeah. yeah. Um, and so uh, my friend took me as his like plus one to go meet and greet and I got him to sign it. And we got this amazing photo of him looking up right as he was signing it with like the classic Lewis Pedersen death stare. Yeah. Um, it was pretty funny. Yeah. You have the other one, but it's in, in storage. I know. Somewhere. Yeah, it's it's somewhere. It's I think it's in my closet. In the bag. In the bag. I've got like thirty jerseys in the bag. It's not good. Whoa. Yeah. Um, if you can name one off the top of your head, that's in the bag right now. Um, I have a signed Gratsky Oilers jersey that's currently in the bag. <laughs> not bad. Yeah. And that was. Like, was that, like, early on in your Hall of Famer, like, jersey chase? Um, I actually think I only got that one, like, two years ago. Okay. But, I mean, it's still not not bad to have. No. At all. No. Yeah. It's the only Oilers jersey I own. In a better timeline or world, it would have been uh, Gretzky uh, Canucks jersey if uh, John McCaw yeah. didn't get involved. Yeah. That is a brutal story. The, the late night phone call. Yeah. And I, I've actually, um, I used to be on a podcast called Point Shot Hockey. Um, and I, I think at the time we did the interview, it was called Area 51. But we actually, we had an interview with Arthur Griffiths where we talked about that. And it's like, it's hilarious Ooh. to hear him tell the story. We're like, because Arthur Griffiths didn't want that to happen. Like everything yeah. was set and then um, John McCall was like, no, like it needs to happen now. Yeah. It's a pretty funny story from like somebody who is kind of privy to behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. I, I want to check that out actually. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, thank you so much for coming on. It was a blast to go through all those. Yeah, no you. problem. Thanks for having me. You can find Sam on Twitter. Um, it's uh What's your, it's like Samantha CP. Uh, Samantha CP underscore. Okay. Yeah. Samantha CP underscore. Um, and then on the broadcast, um, where a lot of really cool stuff happens and it's the real voice of the fans. I don't care uh, what press garbage says. Uh, it's some good stuff. It's some good shit. You should listen to it. Anyone, <laughs> anyone you want to shout out uh, or, or plug? No, I don't think so. I think just, just the podcast. Yeah. <laughs>